Hello, welcome to the second tutorial on how to create UI controls for a 2D platformer or any 2D game that you might be working on. Okay, so let's get started. In the last tutorial, we created this ground here, okay, and we have a couple of sprites and in the project panel. In the assets folder, we have a couple of sprites here. Now, we're going to add a background, so please look inside the sprites folder and the BG folder we have a sprite by the name BG. And if you're new to this tutorial series and uh, you wanna use these sprites, please have a look in the description. I have provided the link where you can download all the sprites which we're using in this tutorial. Or please feel free to use your own sprites. The basic idea is to have a background, okay? So let's go ahead and drag and drop this BG sprite here and drop it in there in the scenes panel. And Unity is going to create a game object and call it BG, the same name as the sprite. And if you look in the inspector panel, it's got the sprite renderer and the transform component. Now, well, if you see this white border, right, this is the camera, okay? So let's switch to the game view or game panel, and we're going to adjust the background to match with the borders of the camera. So we can do this using the transforms scale property. So let's change this to two. Okay, that looks good. And this guy here, let me turn this to 1.7. Okay, but I guess this about looks good, right? Okay, so let's move on now. We've just created a background. We have a ground, we have the player. Well, there's something missing here. We have to add a couple of crates and then add the UI buttons. I'm going to deal with the UI buttons a little later because I'll have to discuss about the Unity 4.6 UI system, okay? There is a bit of information which will definitely help you. So let's quickly go to the projects folder, let's look in the items folder, and let's drag this crate here, okay, like so. And here in the transform, let's click the gear icon and reset its value to 000. And if you double click the crate here, it's going to highlight the crate inside the scenes view. Now, well, this crate is hanging in the air right now. If I hit the play button here, and let me just zoom this here so you can see the scene better, and let's get down to the game view. If I hit the play button here, do you think that this crate is going to fall down and rest on the ground? That should happen, right? Because that's what happens in games. You know, things are resting on the ground. These players are here. Well, let's have a look. Let's press the play button. Oh dear. Well, it looks like the crate is just hanging up there in the air. And so is the player. So what's going on here? I mean, why is the player and the crate hanging up in the air? I don't see any magician or this is not any sort of a magical game here. So let's exit the play mode. And I introduce you to the concept of the rigid body. Okay, it sounds a little funny, rigid body, okay, a body which is rigid, but it's very important. And first let me show you, let's highlight the crate, and when I add a rigid body component to this crate game object, this crate will start obeying the laws of physics. It's that simple, okay? If you have a rigid body, your game object will start behaving according to the laws of physics, and gravity is a law of physics, so the crate is going to fall down. All right, so let's see how we can add it. You can add a component by clicking this button here and typing in rigid body 2D, like so. This is going to add the rigid body component. Or you may wanna have a look at the list items here. And since we're going to deal with physics and physics 2D, because this is a 2D game. So click physics 2D and you're going to see the rigid body 2D right on top click it and there you go the rigid body 2d appears as a list of components inside the inspector panel so and this is these are the various properties of rigid body 2d and if you want more information about it remember I told you that this blue icon this blue book icon is going to help you if you click this well the unity manual opens up and you've got a lot of information about rigid body 2d and if you look, there are so many, so many properties and there are a lot of details. 
So feel free to go through this documentation. It's going to be helpful. Well, the moss here, okay. Then you have linear drag, okay. And when you and when you hover over a certain property, you get to see something which tells you what this will do. The angular drag, then you have the gravity scale, okay. How much gravity affects this body? By default, it's one. Then you have is kinematic. Now, if you turn this guy on, is kinematic the rigid body or the crate or any game object will will stop responding to gravity and other physics forces so this kinematic will make the body static it'll just keep hanging wherever it is okay so right now we don't want this then you have interpolate okay currently we do, we're not doing anything but interpolate and extrapolate i'm going to talk about it maybe in a future tutorial and well, sleeping mode, because of performance issues, you never want to use this never sleep, okay? You want your game objects to be sleeping initially and uh, when they gain focus, you this is the default. Then you have sleeping mode, you have collision detection, discrete, you don't want continuous collision detection, right? Uh, this happens outside the update cycle, okay? And this happens during each update. So by default, you want to use discrete. Then you have constraints, means you can freeze the position in the X and Y, or you can freeze the rotation in the Z axis. So this guy's got gravity scale, right? So it should fall down and rest on the ground, right? So we're going to go ahead and check it. And there, oops, but what just happened? The box fell right through the ground. What happened here? The box was supposed to land on the ground and stay there, right? Okay. Well, welcome to the concept of colliders. Now, if in simple terms, if two game objects, say for example, this crate and this cat here, they decide to bump into one another, okay? If the crate starts moving in the direction of the cat here and hits the cat like so, okay, like this. If these two game objects do not have colliders, the collision will not take place, okay? There's going to be no bumping and this box will pass straight through the cat. So that's the reason we need colliders because in games the cat needs to collide with something right so that this cat can have some sort of an impact or this cat can break the uh, the boxes and stuff like that collect coins. So how do you add colliders? Okay, It's very simple collider and rigid bodies these are all components right and components live inside the inspector panel and the way to add a component is first make sure you have highlighted or selected the game object in the hierarchy panel and then look in the inspector panel you'll find the add component button and click the add component button and you can simply start typing the name of the collider so since we're looking at a collider there are different types of colliders let me show you what kind of colliders we have and colliders live inside the physics 2d so here are the circle collider, the box collider 2D, S collider 2D, and polygon collider 2D. And since we're dealing with physics 2D, so all of these have the 2D attached to it. Okay, so since the crate is a square, okay, so we're going to use the box collider. And there we go. The box collider 2D component appears as a part of this game object crate. Let me turn this BG off for you so I can show you something and highlight this crate again and let me zoom in a bit and bring this right here in the center okay now you see this green border let me zoom in a little bit more this green border here okay this is the collider I was talking about so your crate is now equipped with the super collider called box collider 2d so this box collider 2d will allow this crate now to bump into somebody and do all kind of crazy stuff okay now, uh, we want to edit the collider so that it fits exactly. So you see this button here, okay? It says edit collider. When you press this, these four tiny little squares, they appear on the four sides of the collider. And these are markers, which you can drag up and down like so to change and adjust the height and width of the collider. So currently I'm doing it like this. 
and this looks okay to me so that's about it after editing press it again and there we go we've just edited the collider okay so now if I press the play button the box should just fall down on the ground and stay over there right well let's have a look let's press the play button here and oops what just happened I thought that we added the collider and it should have been resting on the ground but it just went through so what just happened well I'm sure you have this question right and if you're new to this programming of Unity uh, well it just happened so that we also have to add a collider to the ground game object okay it's very important for two objects to collide with one another both of them have to have colliders so let's quickly add a box collider 2d like so and we're going to edit it real quick now because I'm sure you're getting comfortable and when you start seeing this happening faster you will start getting comfortable and start doing this easily yourself okay there we go we have just added a box collider like so and we can hit this button here the ground has a box collider now if we press the play button and see what happens boom so we have a crate which is now colliding with the ground you know we have both the colliders of the crate and the ground colliding with one another and that's about it that's the concept of collision detection we can have a script which can register these collisions and we can have some sort of functionality and we can and we can do something based on these collisions we'll see that but hey I have a question why is this cat still hanging up in the air well can you tell me why okay excellent okay yes there is no collider and there is no rigid body attached to the cat okay so we'll just do that in the next moment let's go ahead and add first a rigid body 2d okay and we're going to add a box collider 2d to this cat and we're going to edit this collider like so here okay and we might just want to zoom in a little bit so we can see this better there we go I guess it looks okay there we go the cat is equipped with the superpowers of rigid body 2d and the box collider 2d okay so now the collisions will take place let's press play and see this in action the cat just fell down and is standing on the ground now there's a crate here perfect the perfect beginning of your 2d platformer now let's quickly duplicate this crate by hitting command D okay and we have another crate we can drag and drop it like this when you hit the play button you're gonna see what happens there one crate resting on top of the other crate you may want to turn the background on now like so okay but hey what just happened okay we just created the two crates right where are the crates all right there is no magic going on here it's simply unity's way of um, the sorting layers okay so I welcome you to the concept of sorting layers now remember in the last tutorial I talked about the sprite renderer let's uh, highlight a particular sprite the background and the sprite renderer and here the sorting layer this is the guy who is the main culprit okay now this order in layer for the BG game object okay is zero and for the ground here there are different ground tiles which have sprite renderer right this main game object ground does not have a sprite renderer it's just an empty container for these individual tiles right so if we highlight or select all of these tiles and look in the sprite renderer okay you see the order and layer that's one if I change this to zero the ground just vanishes okay if I change this to one the ground comes back on so that's your clue okay this is how we can get the crates back on okay if you highlight the crate here and look in the sprite renderer and see the order and layer there we go this guy here is zero change it to one and there we go just like magic this guy comes back on we can do the same with the second crate here change the order and layer to one and bingo we have both the crates back in action okay so this is a very important thing so now you've seen 
how order in layer can help you place game objects one in front of the other okay kind of arrange them inside a particular hierarchy okay so you can determine which will be available first for the camera to render and so on okay so now we have two crates we have the player game object we have the background we have the ground okay let's create another crate here like so and uh, you might want to take it here something like this and then duplicate it again we're going to keep it here another command D and like so okay let's hit the play button and see what happens okay there we go so we have a nice character here two crates this character should be able to jump or kick these crates and you know we can place a sign here so let's do that let's go to the project panel and we have the sign let's drag and drop it here in the scenes panel okay and now since we do not want any physical interaction with this sign so we don't need to add a collider or any rigid body 2d we simply are going to place the sign here and you can switch to the game panel to see what's going on so I think the sign is a little small so X is the width Y is the height so I'm going to change this to 1.5 or maybe 1 point uh, or, or maybe 2 and change this to 2 as well so you've got the sign post okay we're going to place it like so okay so we've got a scene all set up and the next thing we need to do is write a small script so that we're able to control this character using the keyboard and also we need to add the mobile UI so in the next tutorial we'll go ahead and add the mobile UI and do the scripting so I thank you so much for staying with me and during this tutorial I hope you have seen the basics of setting up the entire 2d platformer thing and if you have any questions please feel free to send in your comments and i'll try to help you as best as i can my name is abel and i really wish you a very happy coding with unity 5 game engine and i look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial